Sarah Peggy or Woody Eye, otherwise known as Stringer Haas or Chainer Haas, is one of those most loved plants around the world because of those super cute, super adorable heart shaped leaves that grow in the whole line, hence its name. It's native to Southern Africa and it's one of these plants I've been growing for many years and these are things I wish I had known from the beginning when growing this plant. So let's dive into some issues that can occur with Stringer Hearts. It comes in two different varieties. You have the normal green variety, which is the non-variegated version. The leaves are all green. And then you have the variegated variety that has that creamy white and pink sort of coloration on the leaves. If your plant doesn't have enough color in your variegated Stringer Hearts, this is because it's not receiving enough sunlight. Stringer Hearts it's like a succulent type of plant. It does like a lot of sunlight. It cannot withstand a low light area. It needs at least three or four hours of sunlight to actually thrive and produce those beautiful colors on the leaves. So if you're finding your string of hearts is not producing those pinks and creamy white, pop in an area that receives more sunlight. I have mine right next to a south facing window. It receives sunlight all day long. It actually uh, receives two or three hours of direct sunlight each afternoon as well. And I find that this really helped to actually promote, to help the plant push out those beautiful coloring on the leaves. Sometimes when growing stringer hearts, you may notice over time that the actual plant looks a bit bold meaning that it may have beautiful lush chains growing on the side, but the actual top of the plant and top of the pot, it's missing a lot of leaves. It's looking like a bold person. And this is occurring because the Stringer Hearts is not getting enough sunlight directly on top of the plant. If a plant is actually in an area where it's only receiving light in one direction, so say the side of the plant, the plant is actually going to actually focus more its energy, more focus on growing new leaves in that area where it's receiving the most sunlight. So if the Stringer Hearts is not receiving enough sunlight at the top, the plant is not going to actually focus its energy in growing new leaves at the top of the plant. So if you're finding that, pop in an area where it's receiving two or three hours of direct sunlight on top of the plant and you'll notice more leaves will start growing in that area. If you're finding that your plant is super bold at the top, then you can actually propagate new plants at the top. So all you need to do is cut some cuttings there, pop the cuttings on the top, making sure the leaves actually focus upwards, so the leaves are facing upwards, and then top, lightly top it off with cacti soil or even normal potting mix, and then water it and you'll notice over the time the top of the plant is going to more, look more lush and this is what I did to one of my plants. So this one here is a string of hearts that's full and lush at the top. This one here is actually an older string of hearts and over time it lost its leaves at the top so it's not as full and lush and that's what I did. I just popped more cuttings at the top so that over time it's going to be even more bushy at the top of the plant. Sometimes if you're finding that your the stringer hearts is actually the chains, the, the, the spacing between the leaves is very long. So I'm talking about the actual distance between the leaves, which is called an internode. If you're finding the spacing between the leaves is very long, and that's because the plant is not receiving enough sunlight on that side of the area or not enough sunlight in general. And what's happening is that the internode is growing longer because the plant is actually searching for more sunlight. So move your plant to an area that's receiving more sunlight uh, and you'll notice that the spacing will become less. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Min, I'm your crazy plant lady. And if you're a returning subscriber, yay. Thank you so much for coming back and watching more content and supporting the channel by subscribing and hitting the likes button. The other times that you find that the Stringer Hearts, if you're finding that 
it's not actually the chains are not looking very bushy it's actually looking more uh, like it's uh, raggy it's not there's not enough leaves then you're seeing more strings rather than the leaves I would definitely recommend you prune your stringer heart because pruning the stringer heart it's actually going to make the plant more bushy over the time because what happens is that the chain the, there is a possibility of the chain actually branching off so you end up instead of one sort of um, branch you end up well one string you end up with two strings or maybe even three I haven't actually seen four strings of heart branching off but I've seen lots and lots of times that the strings actually split and branch into two and that makes it more full and lush over time and the best time to actually prune your string of hearts is at the start of the spring this the reason for that is usually spring and summer that's when the warmer weather is uh, available and the plant tends to grow has a bigger growth spurt during that time if you're noticing that your string of hearts if you're noticing one or few leaves are dropping off I wouldn't even worry about that that's just a normal process of, of a life of a leaf what it's done is that it's it's done its work it's used the sunlight produce energy through photosynthesis and provide energy for the plant to grow if you're noticing one or few not a problem at all if however you're noticing your string of hearts it's dropping leaves multiple leaves suddenly it's dropping all these leaves the most common reason is from overwatering and overwatering what it can do is that it can rot the roots and this can actually kill the plant over time there's actually several ways of overwatering a string of hearts it, string of hearts is a succulent type of plant it actually likes its drought it likes its soil to be completely dry before watering so the first reason is watering it too often not letting the soil completely dry before re-watering and giving the, uh, the plant too much water at one time and the soil has actually gone soggy and not just moist not getting rid of that excess water because sometimes like my plants they're in cover pots and so if I don't get rid of that excess water that drains out of the nursery pot drainage holes then the plant is still going to sit in that that water and the soil is still going to absorb the water and using pots that don't have drainage holes in it the other time that I find is that it also uh, depends on the type of soil uh, the type of soil is quite important stringer hearts it's a succulent type of plant so it likes a well draining soil it doesn't like its soil to be soggy or moist for too long my soil mixture consists of 50% potting mix and 50% cacti soil I will pop in a few pieces of horticultural charcoal and what horticultural charcoal does it actually cleans the water when watering the plant and it reduces or minimizes the amount of bacteria in the soil and reducing the bacteria in the soil reduces the risk of root rot occurring and the other time is that you can have the opposite problem you can actually find that the plant is being underwatered now the reason for it to be underwatered is well there's certain there's certain reasons that can cause underwatering but underwatering tends to kill a string of hearts slower compared to overwatering and it's easy to tell by the way the leaves are actually uh, dying off if you're finding that your string of hearts initially it's no longer plumb or thick or firm to the touch then it's it's basically starting to be near requiring water if you're finding that the leaves look like they're more wrinkly uh, they're curling up or the other part is that you start to see some crispiness of the leaves and the leaves start to be quite bendable then it's a sign that the plant actually needs to have water and it's a good time to water the plant if you're finding if you leave your string of hearts to dry up even further what's going to happen is that the leaves will start to go more brown more crispy and then it will die off so underwatering is a more a slow 
killing of the plant. And the best way to, to find out if your plant needs water or not, besides checking the soil moisture every few days, sometimes we just don't have time to uh, check the soil moisture. So the easiest way I find is understand your plant and see how it looks like when it doesn't need water compared to when it does need water. So first of all, feeling the actual leaves. So the leaves, when it doesn't need water, it's nice and firm and plump. You can also use this test called a taco test. I didn't make up this test. I actually found it out when I was watching YouTube from another gardener and his name's Nick Pelleci and he's an, a very good expert in gardening and he calls it the taco test. And so this test is an excellent way of telling if your stringer hearts needs water or not. So you feel the leaves, is it nice, plump and firm? That means that it doesn't need water and it's very, it's very hard to bend the leaves into a taco. It's actually more likely the leaf is going to snap rather than being able to be bent into a taco. If you're finding that the leaves are thin, they're wrinkly, it's very bendable, it's easy folded into a shape of the taco, it's a sure sign that your plant actually needs watering. And that's what I tend to do with my stringer hearts. I no longer use a moisture meter to check or I no longer use my finger to check if um, my plant needs watering. The taco test is a fantastic way, unless you don't get your hands dirty. The other times is that if you're finding, if you're seeing these little roundish balls on the plants, don't, don't cut them off. They're actually normal. They're actually uh, basically rhizomes or areas where you can use those balls to grow new plants. Also, it's a means of the plant storing water in that, that little ball. So that's why Stringer Hearts is one of the most uh, drought tolerant plants available. And you can, yes, you can use these balls and pop it into soil and a new plant will grow out of it. And sometimes what I do is I just grab that little ball that if it's on the string and pop it directly on top of the soil. And that's just an easy way to propagate new plants. Or you can pop that little ball, get a pot next to the plant, pop those little ball into the new pot with soil and a new plant will grow out of it. You can also see these little balls when you're in the soil. So if you do see that, I do often lightly cover them and this way it actually promotes the plant to grow a new plant out of it. The other time is that if you're noticing, well, if you're noticing that the leaf, the actual size of the leaf is quite small, well, there's certain reasons why leaves can be small. It may be the fact that the plant is a young plant, it's not very mature, so it doesn't have its energy and enough root system to grow those big fat leaves that are size, bigger than the size of the thumb. And if you want to really help your stringer hearts to grow bigger leaves, then making sure that you fertilize the plant. I tend to fertilize my stringer hearts whenever I'm seeing it growing. And that's usually more in the spring and summer time. I will still fertilize it during autumn and winter as long as I'm seeing it growing. And what I use is a liquid fertilizer. You can use just a well-balanced liquid fertilizer. I tend to use a product called uh, Focus, uh, Foliage Focus, and but a well-balanced liquid fertilizer is fine. You, just uh, need to dilute the fertilizer to 50% of the concentration that's recommended. And the reason I, I recommend you do that is because if you full, put the full dosage of the liquid fertilizer that's recommended, often it can actually burn the roots of this plant and reducing the concentration helps to minimize the risk of the roots burning from over fertilizing. The other time is that if you're noticing that the leaves are small, a really good way to actually try and promote those bigger leaves is by increasing the humidity. Now a string of hearts, it actually doesn't need high humidity to thrive. It can 
adapt quite well to low humidity. I haven't actually had any issues with this plant, but I did notice when the humidity happened to go higher up, the leaves actually grew bigger. And to actually increase the humidity, the easiest way to do that is to get a, a plastic clear plastic bag or what I tend to, a clear plastic bag and you can wrap around the plant like more at the top of the plant, making sure there's a gap. I find it more easier just to use Glad Wrap. Glad Wrap, one single piece of Glad Wrap, pop it on top, making sure there is a gap. So making sure that there's area where there still can be air circulation to avoid fungal disease. And this really helps to increase the humidity of the, this area. And you'll notice that bigger leaves will grow out of it. If you're finding also that your string of hearts, you're finding that it's not actually growing very quickly, it's a very slow growing, to actually help promote more growth and faster growth is by making sure that this plant is in an area where it's warm. Uh, this plant can still survive quite well in a cooler area that's below 10 degrees, or uh, which is equivalent to about, I think, 50 Fahrenheit, then it's quite easy for this plant to still survive. But if you want to grow for it to be faster growth, you want to simulate more warmer conditions by increasing the heat in that area. You can do the same using a clear plastic bag and wrapping the whole plant around it and making sure that there's no air conditioning that's actually blowing onto the plant because that can make it uh, be too cold for the plant to actually grow quickly. So that's what the things I've learned while growing my string of hearts. And if you've noticed things that you've learned while growing your string of hearts and you want to share your tips, I would love to read about them in the comments section down below. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave it in the comments section down below and I will get back to you. If you want to know how to propagate a string of hearts, watch this video here and I'll see you next video.